This video explains the concept of the mean hydronic activity coefficient. All right, one of the main concepts of electrolyte solutions is that they tend to deviate from ideality to a larger extent than non-electrolyte solutions. And uh, the way that we actually can take care of this problem is by uh, using something that is called uh, the activity coefficient of the ion. Okay, so uh, let's illustrate this problem with um, uh, just a solution of sodium chloride uh, in water, okay, which is this process. Uh, where the solid breaks apart into the ions that are solvated in solution, and we've seen structures for uh, how water uh, surrounds uh, those ions to generate hydration spheres and so forth. And suppose that we want to write the equilibrium constant for the process. This equilibrium constant would be uh, as follows. It will just be the activity of uh, products over the activity of reagents. I, we can actually develop this further and then try to map these activities into useful measures of concentration like molar concentration. Right? Uh, and these concentrations will, all be, uh, will always be at equilibrium because that's what, uh, what we're trying to do here. Right? So the way that we normally do this is by saying the following. Well, that is the activity of a solid and those uh, are we consider to be one. And then we have the activity of the ions, uh, right? So that would be the uh, molar concentration of your sodium chloride, or your sodium ion, divided over the reference concentration, which is one molar, times the molar concentration um, of the chloride ion over one molar. Okay, so uh, notice that uh, uh, these ones, uh, you, people usually don't, don't write them. We ne uh, rarely, uh, rarely divide over this uh, activity of one. And then what you actually have here is simply the product of the concentration of the ions. That's actually what you have learned in analytical chemistry as the sol solubility product of the salt. In this case, that solubility product would be uh, uh, very, very large. All right, so, uh, it, but here's the problem, right? Uh, in this case, we're actually assuming that the solution behaves ideally and that we can map the activities into concentrations directly. But again, that's actually often not the case uh, when you have ions because there's great deviations from ideality. Right, so usually, uh, or if you want to do this correctly, the way you, that you would do this is by uh, simply multiplying this by an activity coefficient for uh, the ions, right? So that would be the activity coefficient of sodium plus uh, and the activity coefficient of chloride minus. Generally, when we look at non electrolytes those activity coefficients are one, so we rarely uh, have talked about them. And most people, in, uh, when you think about ions, uh, they also ignore that they can be different from one, and then uh, the equations that you have seen in the sol solubility product don't have any, any activity coefficients. Right? But if you want to do accurate work, and in reality, it happens that if you have uh, you know, concentrations that might be as low as uh, 0.1, 0.01 more, uh, you already have uh, these uh, uh, activity coefficients are different from one, and that means that, again, for accurate work, you do need to consider them. The question is, well, how do you consider them? How do you write them? And, and the problem is that you actually, it's very difficult to determine uh, these activity coefficients in isolation. And that is because it's uh, uh, virtually impossible to generate a solution in which you have only uh, a positive ion or only a negative ion. Okay, you're always going to have counter ions. And that means that when you make measurements, you kind of see the effect of both together. Right, so instead of uh, thinking about the activity coefficient of uh, the positive ions and the activity coefficient of the negative ions, what we use is something that is called a mean ionic activity coefficient, which is simply defined as this, okay, gamma plus minus. And again, uh, that is something that we can use to replace these ones, which cannot be measured uh, uh, easily. Right, so instead of uh, doing, uh, writing this, what we would do is write this, okay, we can replace it by uh, gamma plus minus and gamma plus minus, and then what you will have is that this expression is going to be gamma plus minus squared, and then the concentration of sodium ions plus the concentration of chloride minus ions. And then you would need to divide this by one molar squared so that the units cancel out and you have a dimensionless equilibrium constant. Notice that these activity coefficients are also going to be equal to, uh, are going to be di dimensionless. All right, so how do we write here the activity coefficient generically for any uh, electrolyte, for any salt? Well, the way that we do this uh, is to write uh, the following. Notice that uh, in this case, we actually have written uh, the activity coefficient, this, okay? Uh, the way that we're gonna write this is uh, as the uh, geometric mean 
of the activity coefficients of the ions, okay, multiplied by those stimulant coefficients of those ions in the solution process. Okay, uh, so let's actually try to unpack what this is. Okay, that will be the product of the acti activity coefficients of uh, uh, the ions separately, elevated to the power of the stoichiometric coefficients in the ion in the solution process, divided over 1 over the sum of the stoichiometric coefficients. All right, so uh, let's write this again. Notice that this is going to be sodium plus, nu plus would be the stoichiometric coefficient of the uh, sodium ion uh, in the electrolyte, okay, so that is a 1, which means that the, that power is 1 and we don't write it. Okay, for chloride it will be exactly the same. Alright, uh, and notice that again the stoichiometric coefficient of the chloride is 1, so that power will be 1, and then you just have to divide over the sum of these two stoichiometric coefficients, that's what this new is. Okay, and that's going to be 1 over 2. Okay, so that is uh, uh, what the mean unique activity coefficient is, and notice that gamma plus minus squared, which is what we have right here, will simply be equal to the product, of the so, uh, activity coefficient of sodium, chloride minus, which is what we had initially in this expression. Okay? And again, notice that that is just the geometric mean, it's not the arithmetic mean, but the geometric mean of uh, uh, the activity coefficients of those two lines. Right, let's do this for a, a slightly different salt so that you can see uh, how this works uh, in a more general way. Okay, so suppose that the salt is not now uh, sodium chloride by sodium carbonate. Okay, so you'll have sodium carbonate, which is a solid, uh, and that uh, dissociates in the, into the following. Right, notice that you have, you're going to have two sodium ions for each carbonate ion. Okay, so there's going to be two sodium ions in aqueous solution plus uh, carbonate two minus ion in aqueous solution. Right, so the idea would be, uh, can you please calculate what uh, the uh, mean ionic activity coefficient for the carbonate, uh, sodium carbonate is? You can write it like this. That means that is the mean ionic activity coefficient for sodium carbonate. Well, again, that is going to be the geometric mean of the ions. Notice that in solution, you're going to have twice as many sodium ions as carbonate ions, right? So that should factor in somehow into this uh, calculation. Well, the way that the factors in is with the powers, okay? Notice that now that will be the power of 2, okay? And for carbonate, that will be just the power of 1. So notice that when you're calculating this activity coefficient, right, uh, this uh, activity coefficient for the sodium ion factors in more strongly than that for the carbonate ion. And again, that, that has to do with the fact that you have twice as many or more uh, sodium ions in solution than you have carbonate ions. Now, uh, the sum of the stoichiometric coefficients would be uh, 3, so that is the cubic root of the product of these uh, activity coefficients to that power. Okay, so this is the concept of uh, uh, the mean uh, ionic activity coefficients. Now you could use those in calculations of maybe equilibrium constants or perhaps osmotic pressure uh, uh, measurements for uh, a solution of the salt in which every time that you write the concentration of the ions, you will need to multiply by the mean ionic activity coefficient to make the calculations accurate. In the next video, we're actually going to compute uh, uh, this number explicitly using the Weyl-Hickel theory of electrolytes.